Waiting with bated breath for Tia Tequila's next reality show, I'm Matt Strack. This is That Sports Show. Today on That Sports Show, slackers at play, analysis more low rent than even ours, and convincing your loser friends that you're an athlete. But first, so you remember Avery Jenkins hitting a crucial putt to win the world championships in Kansas City a couple of months ago? No? Well, let's refresh your memory. That's right, it's disc golf, the only sport that's been able to outlame televised poker. Now, this one has it all, fanny packs, bad mustaches, and balding guys with ponytails and cargo shorts. And if you're like me, you're, you've been wondering what's been happening on the disc golf scene since Jenkins hit that clutch putt and took home the top prize of $247 plus an embroidered polar fleece. We better toss it over to the only show with lower production value than ours, Disc Golf Monthly. In the disc golf country of North Carolina, a friendly rivalry exists between two disc golfers, Brian Schwayberger and Michael Johansson. While Brian represents Seneva's team champion, Michael represents Discraft's tour team. Stay tuned for the friendly showdown at the Loreella Park Disc Golf Course in Spotsylvania, Virginia, as Disc Golf Monthly starts now. Wow, I can't believe they scored this footage. Schwaberger and Johansson at Laura Lee? This is like Ollie Frazier in 75. They must have paid a fortune for these rights. Matt, we're here in Virginia for a stretch of 10 days, and we're starting here at Loreella. It's going to be exciting. Uh, uh, there's 10 days of disc golf action going on down here. <laughs> Let me give you a little tip. Are you looking to end your marriage or relationship? Vote this suggestion for your next anniversary. Hey, honey, who's ready for 10 days of disc golf action? I've told all your friends how excited you are. Let's move on to some of that stimulating first round coverage. Brian Schwaberger putting on hole four. These are the putts you need to make all day. Dead solid center chains for Brian. All right, Dave Huff putting on hole two. He's got a little downhill look, got to be careful. Uh-oh. Oh, just went across the chains and that's, rolled away. That's never a good sign. Never like that. Michael Graham putting on hole five. After a nice approach. Solid. Solid <laughs> oh, good Christ. Watching this stuff is like watching my senile grandparents try to buy fruit from a street vendor. They're working so, so hard for so little payout. Let's jump ahead to some of that late round action, huh? Now Michael, trying to find a gap any way he can. Down to his knees. Yeah. And Look made that. it. That was a beautiful shot. Unbelievable, there, man. There you go. What a, what a, turn what a performance by Michael Johansson with that effect. All right, let's be serious for a second. Compare that to this. Well, here it comes. Oh, my goodness. Now, after watching that shot, one of the most clutch displays of pure skill ever, can we really continue to let these milquetoast hippies use the word sport to describe what it is that they're doing? From now on, if people who throw frisbees at steel tubing are allowed to say they're participating in a sport, then we're officially allowed to call screaming at the television a sport, drinking before noon a sport, and coming up with excuses about why we don't want to hang out with our significant other's shallow friends a sport. Why are the hippies allowed to claim that their hobby qualifies, but people who don't wear the same pair of Tevas every day aren't? That's it for another episode of That Sports Show. As usual, be sure to visit us at thatsportshow.com. Until then, I'm Matt Strack. We'll see you next time. Ray Rogers again. His drive on 12. Our man. like he's going for a CTP. Our man. He's ripping it out there. Look at that. That's a nice throw. Have a look. And here's Bill Fim making a putt on hole 18. All right, Michael Johansson. What on 18? Nothing but middle. David Stoll. David Stoll's drive on four. And this is a long par four up the hill. 